Greetings, my name is Slight, and this is a Gunfire Reborn Overexplain, where we are going to be talking about the weapon class of launchers that you see on the screen. I'm going to be going through each of these weapons, talking about them shortly, going through the major inscriptions that are used for this weapon class, and then at the end of the video, we're going to actually analyze, uh, I think it's around 14 or so, uh, sort of random weapons that I found through my runs or on the Discord, and just evaluate whether or not those weapons are any good. Um, so, without further ado, let's get started. Launchers are one of the most interesting, if sad, um, classes of weapons in Gunfire Reborn. They have a lot of problems. The first main problem is that they have a low elemental effect chance. The second problem is that they can't crit. crit. Uh, the third problem is, coupled with their low elemental effect chance, they don't usually apply a lot of hits, which would solve the... Uh, low elemental effect chance, so they tend to just be bad at applying elements in general, and oftentimes their damage is rather low even in the best case scenario. It pretty much exclusively takes the dog with his explosion uh, build path for most of these to work, uh, but the other thing about launchers is that they're highly varied. Bone Dragon, Deafening Mortar, Frenzied Shark, Justice, Shrieker, and Tiger Cannon all work very differently and have different uh, uh, reasons to use each of these particular weapons. Um, and so because of that, let's talk about them because uh, n these are not all created equally. Bone Dragon is a unique weapon in that it pulls enemies together and sort of has a, a sort of a disabling effect. Um, it's actually a fairly good support weapon, uh, especially in in groups, if if multiplayer wasn't so easy, Bone Dragon would be very very powerful in uh, multiplayer because it locks down groups of enemies and keeps them from being able to run away. And so, even if one player's job was just to keep like you know five or six enemies in one spot, they could do that with Bone Dragon. That being said, the damage is not super high, doesn't have a whole lot going for it except for that. I will say the Bone Dragon is pretty good early game. Uh, as it allows you to beat uh, some of the stone men room vaults very easily because you can just sort of group all the enemies together. This is most notable in the enclosed stone room area in the Longling Tomb rather than the big open one with the uh, two levels. Deafening Mortar is a new addition to the cast here and by far the best one. It solves pretty much all of the problems of the entire category of weapons. It uh, has a low percent elemental effect chance, but it does hit multiple times. It has a very high amount of damage. Um, and so for that reason, doesn't tend to struggle like some of the other weapons do. And just even in the best case, not doing a huge amount of damage. Um, and uh, uh, there was something else. Uh, oh, I, I guess that's it, but that is a huge deal, and because you can use elements on this particular uh, weapon and it has high base damage, it tends to do very well. Probably the best launcher um, uh, of the category. Frenzied Shark is a rather low uh, performance weapon. If it did more damage, it would be much better, but because it uh, its, main, its main draw is that it doesn't slow you down as so much as the rest of them, and that should be mentioned is that not only do launchers have all of the problems I've mentioned before, but they tend to be the heaviest weapons in the game, slowing you down a, a lot. Um, and for all of the problems that they bring, they tend to be uh, probably the worst class of weapons overall. Deafening Mortar really, really uh, set the mark much higher, the average mark of a launcher much higher, because before Deafening Mortar was there, there, there was really slim pickings. But Frenzy Shark tends to be the worst of all of these weapons, maybe with Bone Dragon, depending on what you're doing solo. Bone Dragon falls off really hard. Frenzy Shark just really doesn't do enough damage to justify all of its downsides. Justice is the only natural elemental uh, launcher here, uh, and it is a unique weapon in general. It is pretty good. Uh, it has a fair elemental effect chance uh, at 20%, uh, tends to do fairly good damage, um, the biggest problem that it has, it has very low arc, very low range, and the projectiles it has are very slow, and that causes it to be kind of hard to use um, in most situations, and uh, tends to be okay. It's not a bad weapon, um, but uh, tends to be outclassed uh, by 
most other options that you have. The biggest problem I would say with Justice is that it has very low range uh, because of its very low projectile speed and uh, arc. Shrieker is probably the second best launcher in the game because of it's the only uh, launcher here that can actually crit. Coupled with a higher magazine size and uh, a fair uh, uh, area of effect as it starts off and good damage, Shrieker actually can be very good. Uh, the fact that it can crit is uh, by far the best part about the weapon. Definitely by far the best part about the weapon. The big drawback with Shrieker is that it does have a charge time for each of its shots, so rate of fire increases do not affect this weapon very well because each shot has to charge up before it can shoot, uh, and therefore it uh, is kind of capped at how fast it can shoot because of that charge time. And lastly, we have Tiger Cannon, which is probably the most straightforward, wholesome, uh, classic launcher uh, that is in the game. It is a one magazine size, one shot rocket that doesn't do the best damage um, and uh, doesn't do enough damage to justify all of its uh, downsides. It tends to be quite weak. It can be good, um, but the times where it's good, any weapon would be good. So is it good? No, it's just fun. Um, so Tiger Cannon, uh, wish it was better. It needs a lot more damage. Uh, to justify all of its downsides, namely its one magazine side and horribly slow reload speed. With that being said, let's move forward to the unique uh, inscriptions for each of these particular weapons. The Bone Dragon unique inscription is gravity projectile deals 50% plus 50% damage to enemies it draws in the center. That is a one meter center, so a very small area, and it's a 50% multiplicative damage increase. When you use this weapon, you don't really use it for damage. So this is quite weak. Deafening Mortar, there's a 20% chance to consume zero ammo when shooting. This is okay. The idea here is that you could kind of like shoot twice in a row, but only on one-fifth of your shots. In general, this tends to be fairly weak. Frenzied Shark, plus 50% damage dealt for every bounce, up to plus 100% damage. If I understand correctly, this is a multiplicative damage increase, which should be really good, but it turns out that it's actually really hard to use this. In general, if you aim at the ground, you can get one bounce, but this weapon is already hard to hit with and further limiting you with trying to get bounces off of things is uh, too much to ask. In general, very weak. Now, Justice plus 25% lucky shot for each projectile detonated at the same time is actually quite strong. To my understanding, it's either four or six uh, of the projectiles get detonated per right click. Uh, so it's very easy to get this up to a large amount of lucky shot chance on each hit. Uh, this is a very good inscription and almost good enough to justify using the Justice, uh, even though the weapon tends to not be very good. Shrieker has two very powerful uh, 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 inscriptions, and it's no wonder that uh, the Shrieker is the second best launcher because it has the ability to crit and actually good exclusives. Uh, the Piercing plus one and Guarantee Critical Explosion after Piercing uh, is pretty strong. Basically, it pierces through something if you hit someone in the head, even if that next hit hits a body shot for whatever reason or hits the wall and explodes, it will do critical damage. And the other one is probably the better one. For every enemy hit, plus 25% damage dealt, up to 100%. Uh, to the current attack. That is a multiplicative damage increase. And when it says for every enemy hit, it doesn't mean counts of hits. It means you have to hit four unique enemies for this to work. Tiger Cannon is plus 50% damage on a direct hit. That is a multiplicative damage increase. Uh, this is pretty good. The I just found an issue with this where I was hitting a horse head shield and it was actually doing no damage, even though like the AOE should definitely be hitting it. Um, but in general, this is pretty good. Um, Again, Tiger Cannon's not that great, and so this isn't good enough to justify using it. Unfortunately, I wish I wish it was. All right, oops, sorry, gonna zoom out. Next up, we have uh, exclusives. Uh, these are just the general exclusives, not specific to a weapon. There are not a huge amount of uh, inscriptions, uh, exclusive ones that work very well with launchers. I'd say these two are the best um, launchers. Uh, this is a launcher only exclusive it says double the projectile for the next shot when hitting two targets in a single shot these have to be two unique targets they cannot be two hits on the same target uh, otherwise it will not work um, and doubling your projectile is quite good you know uh, if you have um, anything that's already giving you multiple projectiles you have a chance to double those so if you uh, have a plus two uh, projectile uh, shot 
uh, then this can, I think, if I understand correctly, will shoot four shots because it doubles the projectiles. All right, uh, and then the other one is the magazine capacity becomes two, and then you get plus 200% lucky shot on the second one. This tends to be good on almost all of the launchers. Um, I don't think that this is bad on any of them, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, this is this is probably one of the this is probably the best one that you can get on the launchers. Uh, is this one here, especially with something that gives you like reload speed, uh, tends to be very very good. One of the like shrieker would actually be is actually tends to be benefited by this because uh, getting a reload speed increase uh, is usually not worth it because it takes so long to shoot your magazine as it is for the shrieker that is. All right, next up we've just got general inscriptions and I've color coded these. Lucky shot, 50% and stability minus 50% is very good on launchers. You can't crit uh, and you really don't have elemental effects so lucky shot tends to be the go-to way to do damage. That doesn't quite work out too well in your favor. Keep in mind that all explosion damage, and I should have mentioned this earlier, but all explosion damage is increased by skill damage. So you don't get crit, you don't get elemental effects really, but you do get skill damage increase. And so the idea here is that uh, it, this kind of makes sense from a design perspective because you can't shoot these types of weapons all the time. So it, you're naturally benefited by weaving in skills in between shots, right? While you're reloading, it's optimal and you'll reload a lot and you'll have downtime a lot with these types of weapons that you actually use your skills and use those damage. So if you're in, a, in an ideal world, you're optimizing uh, actually using skills with using explosion weapons. Um, it doesn't quite work out where that actually works out super well, but that's the idea. Um, but so you've got skill damage and then you've got lucky shot chance. Lucky shot chance tends to be the best way for a weapon to do, for an explosion weapon to do damage. Skill damage is okay. Um, and so that, for that reason, this is an exceptional uh, rare inscription. The other rare inscription that tends to be good is because there's not a huge amount of, of good Geminis for explosion weapons. So I tend to do the uh, magazine size. And because you're doing magazine size increases, this projectile plus 0.2 for every enemy kill tends to be really good. Um, even if you, know, you actually have to shoot, even if you have no reload synergy, you actually don't even need it. Um, because you, you can, you know, Gemini with something with like 70 shots. And, you know, if you're using a Tiger Cannon or a Shrieker, um, or, you know, something like that. I mean, you're going to kill enough enemies to get this maxed out really quickly. Uh, and for that reason, the, this inscription tends to be exceptionally good on, um, explosion weapons, just because of the way that you're sort of, you know, the, the, the direction you're pushed down as far as how to play. Um, in general fashion, the best inscriptions are green, uh, because gunfire reborn. Um, the f let's, I'm going to talk about this one first though, 50% chance to cause an explosion that deals a certain type of damage whenever an enemy is killed. The way that this uh, inscription works is it deals base weapon damage as the explosion. So uh, explosive weapons tend to be much better or sniper weapons tend to be much better with this inscription because they have very high base damages. So this explosion does a lot more damage. So just something to keep in mind uh, when you're seeing this inscription, it does tends to be a little bit better on explosion uh, weapons. Explosion AOE minus 20%, rate of fire and reload speed 40% tends to be extremely good uh, on most uh, explosion weapons. Having a double down on rate of fire and reload speed is totally worth the slight explosion AOE. And certain weapons like Glimmering uh, and Sting um, and Tiger Cannon uh, are pretty much unusable without this particular ascension here. Explosion AOE 2 meters and Lucky Shot Chance, that's just kind of if you're looking for a big explosion build, this one's very good. Um, you know, having a larger AOE is very, very strong. The idea with explosion weapons is that they're supposed to justify their lower damage and inability to crit and all this stuff because they can hit more than one enemy at once. So if I'm hitting four enemies per shot, well, that's a 400% or, or, you know, a 300% multiplicative damage increase overall, right? Um, is that... Is it working out like that? Because a lot of times you're doing damage to just one enemy at a time, um, and then you're you know essentially doing a quarter of the expected damage. 
Um, and so it doesn't tend to work out very well. I would, you know, as an aside, I'd like to see some inscriptions for ex the explosive tree that uh, do extra damage when you're only hitting one enemy, because that would solve a lot of the weapons problems. And because you're sort of incentivized to do this magazine capacity share, the plus 50% rate of fire after killing an enemy tends to be really good as well on this class of weapons. Um, and this isn't good immediately, but it, it tends to be good as you progress through the game uh, when you know how you're going to be building yourself um, as the as the game goes on. All right, so I think that covers all the inscriptions and sort of everything I wanted to talk about uh, as far as just the setup. So we're going to go ahead and move forward uh, to analyzing some weapons here. So first things first is we have a bone dragon plus four. Uh, this is extremely weak. Um, magazine capacity is fine. Uh, you know, we have, you know, counter synergies with like reload speed decrease and a reload speed increase. The projectiles plus two is actually a little bit better than normal on uh, explosive weapons. I should have probably included that in my uh, inscription uh, list uh, because like an extra projectile matters a lot more and won't miss. Um, one of the things to keep in mind with explosive you know, weapons in general is that if you're getting an extra projectile, um, that projectile is almost certainly going to hit um, because it has such a huge area of effect. Um, and so in general, extra projectiles tend to be a little bit better on explosive weapons for that reason. Uh, this is uh, not useful and it's not an early game pickup, so not good. We've got a deafening mortar plus four. Yeah, this is very good. Um, so, you know, when we have these like four inscriptions and a plus four, this means we're picking it up at the in the Anxi Desert. Um, the explosion AOE increase plus the 55% uh, reload speed increase is uh, enough to get this thing really starting to pump out some damage. Um, this needs to reload every time it shoots and does a huge amount of damage. So getting the explosion AOE increase and the lucky shot is sort of everything that you want on a deafening mortar. And while this isn't like a God tier deafening mortar, if I didn't have anything else, I would heavily consider picking this up and start pumping it up. Um, this is quite good. Yeah. The 50% lucky shot, uh, after killing an enemy tends to be slightly better on stuff like snipers and explosive weapons because it actually matters that your next shot is like significantly increased in its lucky shot. Um, the shock chance doesn't matter most likely. All right, here we've got a very early game frenzied shark. Um, I'd say this is okay. I might pick this up. The lucky shot plus 20% chance is okay, is pretty good. If I was playing the cat, then I could probably actually use this for, for a couple rooms because of the 50% damage against enemies in the decay effect, uh, which is a 50% multiplicative damage increase. Uh, frenzied shark does tend to be best in the longling tomb because you can bounce it off walls and stuff which actually can be very safe and powerful there are certain longling tomb uh issues that are very hard to deal with um, but frenzied shark is one of those things that if if you have nothing else it can actually do an okay job so i'd say this is okay early um and i could see i've i've used an early game frenzied shark like this for you know you know two to five rooms just to uh, have some a safe way to clear out rooms while I'm sta I'm standing around a wall and shooting all these projectiles into the other room. Another thing to keep in mind is that because we're doing explosion weapon damage, um, each hit staggers enemies and slows them down, um, and that should be abused. Uh, you know, you know we're seeing like let's let's kind of pull this together. I, I, if I was doing a little bit better job, I would have done this right at the beginning. But you know, this is how we do it. But you're seeing like the problems with launchers, right? Like they don't have crit, they slow you down, they don't apply elemental effects. But then you see the way this, that those are being trying to be trying to be addressed, which is like skill damage increases, high base damage. Uh, each hit staggers enemies. You know, this stuff is trying to make up for the fact that these wep this weapon class is like has all these negative parts to it. it the question is, is it is it quite doing it? The the main problem with staggering on every hit is that stagger is best used right when you need it to like interrupt a, a particular attack 
or or some or stun an enemy who's about to hit you. Um, and if you're staggering people every hit, uh, then they are immune most of the time to stagger because they get immune to stagger for five seconds after being staggered. So just some food for thought about the entire state of, of where launchers are at. All right, next we've got a nimble deafening mortar. Plus two. Yeah, I'd say this is an exceptionally good early game deafening mortar. And uh, I think everything here looks good. The projectiles plus two is great. Reload time is necessary to play this particular launcher. Lucky shot's great. We've got double lucky shot and explosion AOE increase. This is great. This is a very good early game drop. I'd be very happy to see this in the early game. Next up, we've got a Tiger Cannon plus three with lightning damage and a couple rares. I'd say this is very weak. It's okay. 40% base damage is the same base damage that is increased by weapon levels. So this is essentially, you know, uh, 2.66 uh, upgrades uh, with a minus 50% accuracy. So that's absolutely not worth it. This exclusive, this inscription is trash. Um, it is a negative, in fact. Plus one projectile for when hitting three enemies. These have to be three unique enemies. They can't be three hits on the same enemy or anything like that. And for that reason, this tends to only sometimes work. Very hard to get it to work all the time. Um, and with the minus 25% rate of fire, now this is old. This has been updated to minus 10% rate of fire. Um, but even if this was minus 10% rate of fire, the 40% lucky shot is good, but it's not enough to save all the other problems. What, lightning damage here is terrible because we only have a 10% chance of dealing shock. So I would actually prefer to have normal damage uh, because then I wouldn't be doing 75% damage to like half of, half of the enemies that I'd be attacking. Uh, and all like red HP bars are just minus 25% multiplicative damage decrease because I have lightning damage. So this is terrible. All right, so we've got a Deafening Mortar plus 10. This obviously dropped in the late game. Uh, this is an incredibly powerful, like S tier Deafening Mortar. We have the Gemini that we want. Uh, so we want to get a huge magazine. We got projectile plus one and consumption plus 100%. That's fine. That's great. Okay, so we're going to shoot two, two every time. We're doubling the projectile for the next shot when hitting two targets in a single shot. So that's doubling two. So now we've gone not, not from two to three projectiles, but two to four projectiles, if I understand correctly. Um, the other two inscriptions don't matter. This is very, very good. The accuracy doesn't, now the accuracy is normally a bigger problem, but with the deafening mortar, it doesn't really matter since it's so close range and such large AOE. So very, very good. I'd also say that this 50% lucky shot chance will be triggering a lot because of how easy it will be to kill things. So uh, very good. Bone dragon plus 10. This does have some of the stuff that you would want on a Bone Dragon, but it's just too late in the game. Bone Dragon just doesn't really work later in the, the game. Uh, corrosion damage isn't great. Sure, we get the Lucky Shot. Sure, we get the Projectiles. Sure, we get the Exclusive for Double Shots, but we're just not going to be doing enough damage with this Bone Dragon uh, to warrant using it in the late game. And so for that reason, it's, it's, it's always a skip. Bone Dragon in the late game is almost always a skip. We got a late game Frenzied Shark. Nothing special here. We do have fire damage and the self synergy with elemental effects. That's okay. That's a 65% multiplicative damage increase, but you know, uh, there'd be no way that I'd be switching from whatever else I'm using to use this, especially not, you know, I'm not in the Longling Tomb. That's where the Frenzy Shark actually works. Everywhere else, it just doesn't really work very well. We've got an early game justice. Um, I'd say that this is, you know, fine. For the early game, the five base damage, uh, whenever triggering an elemental effect, it's pretty easy to trigger elemental effects on the justice with its 20% chance of dealing burning effect, but it's not super easy. Uh, I'd say in general, it's okay. 
I would probably not use this unless I had to, unless there was really nothing better that I could use. Um, and if I would probably try to etch this early uh, at the at the first chance that I got, just to see if I could get something else going for it, because this exclusive is just not going to, you know, I need to shoot five shots to get one 5% weapon base damage increase. Uh, you know, like that's, you know, one in five shots will actually get this elemental effect, you know, trigger going on this exclusive. It's, it's just not super great. It's okay. Really see it. It's not very good. Here we've got an early bone dragon. I'd say this is okay for an early pickup. You know, um, if I had no, uh, crowd control, if I had no piercing, um, and I, or if I didn't have a secondary weapon, bone dragon, no problem. I'd feel, I'd feel good about it. Here we've got something similar to stuff that we've had in the past. Um, in general, anything that reduces the reload speed of a tiger cannon can't be good. Just can't be good. Unless you, unless you're not reloading, of course. This is not good. For reasons I mentioned earlier with that other lightning tiger cannon. It does have the 5% the rate of fire after killing an enemy. Um, but it just, you know, the fact that this has lightning damage is actually a downside. So, no. Skip. Hard skip. Um, this is okay. We're seeing this relatively early. Um, corrosion damage is a little bit better in the angsty desert than anywhere else. And the 50% lucky shot chance is nice. The big problem is it doesn't have any self synergy. We're not going to Gemini this with an elemental effect, which would activate this burning effect, uh, inscription. So overall, this is very weak. This is okay. We've seen some deafening mortars, and so now you're probably getting a sense of what a good one looks like. This doesn't have any of the reload speed increases or any exclusives. It does have the 50% rate of fire for five seconds after killing an enemy, which shouldn't be scoffed at, because if you get a Gemini, uh, a magazine share Gemini going, uh, really, really helps with your damage output to have that green inscription. So uh, this is okay. Just okay. Oh, we got a, a unique tiger cannon here. Um, this is okay. You know, we are sitting at plus over 100% lucky shot vanilla, you know, right out the gate on the tiger cannon. I'd say that that's pretty good. Um, is it worth it? The big problem here is that we have minus 10% rate of fire. I'm adjusting for the update. Um, and, uh, that's a lot. We've got minus 50% stability, minus 50% accuracy, no rate of fire increases, at least on the weapon. It's okay. The reason I didn't include all these lucky shot things in the inscription list is that they don't really roof like super highly further what it means to do lots of damage on these weapons. Yeah, you need lucky shot, but you need a lot of other things for explosive weapons to actually work. So this is like solid C plus territory, like almost good enough to meme just, just because of what it says, just because of what the inscriptions are. Uh, this is okay early. The biggest problem with this lucky shot chance for three seconds when hitting an enemy is that you shoot really slow. You have to reload in between each shot. So it takes forever for your lucky shot to get actually to hundred percent. So yeah, not that great. I mean, it'd be, if you were able to kill an enemy each time you shot it, then you might be able to keep this 50% reload speed. But the problem is with the way that this inscription is designed, you have to kill the enemy like before you start reloading. So like you have like a short window after getting a kill to start reloading. Um, and then that you get that 50% reload speed. So you start reloading the second after you shoot. And so you don't actually recoup the, the benefits of, of killing the enemy, assuming you do what you want because of the tire can. It doesn't do enough damage. Here we've got a shrieker. Looks like we've got the Critex Gemini, 
the 25% damage dealt. I would say this is a, a very, very good, easily A tier. I would, I could take this to the end of the game for sure. The reason is, is because rate of fire doesn't matter as much. So negative rate of fire isn't as big of a deal on, on uh, the Shrieker. The Shrieker cr can crit, and we always want to build a crit Gemini on the Shrieker. Um, and so having plus 1.2x crit, just vanilla, is really, really good. 50% uh, lucky shot is kind of best on this type of weapon. The explosion chance, explode 50% explosion chance is best on this type of weapon. The explosion AOE synergizes with our uh, exclusive. The more enemies we hit, the more multiplicative damage boosts we get. And we've got a little lucky shot there too. I'd say this is almost as good as it gets with a Gemini. Well, I mean, with a, uh, with a Shrieker. I'd be very, very happy to see this. That's an extremely powerful Shrieker. And I think that does it. I think that covers everything I wanted to do. So hopefully that was helpful to you. Hopefully that gives you a little bit better understanding of the launcher category. And uh, I will see you in the next uh, video. Thanks for your time and uh, I'll catch you next time.